Hello. Today we're Hi. talking to Greet from Welland Garden City. Hi, Greet. How are you? Hello. I'm fine, thank you. Good. Fantastic to hear. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Like, when did you have your stroke, and what's your stroke journey so far been like before we we got to the lockdown? Yeah, so um, I'm 45 and I had my stroke about six months ago, uh, a couple of days after my 45th birthday. And um, I don't have just the normal fast symptoms, they didn't show up, so I had something entirely different. Um, I, uh, my first symptoms were that I, um, I had uh, a choke on uh, some meal. And that happened the day before I was um, hospitalized and um, my voice became very hoarse as well. And the only other thing I felt was um, that I had a different temperature sensation on the left side of my body, but it was my right side face that, that had dropped. So I went to the GP after the choking accident and um, I was rescued by one of my colleagues who slapped me very hard on the back <laughs> uh, until I got out of the wrong space. Um, so I went to the GP and he said I had a Bell's palsy. So uh, my eye was drooping a bit. My, my right face was a little bit low, but not really your typical Bell's palsy. Um, I went to uh, A&E, had a chest x-ray made. Um, they completely missed the symptoms that I had tingling and funny sensation in my left hand um, and I dismissed a lot of it as well because it wasn't your regular f funny thing it wasn't just something that that shouted out to me that I might have had a stroke so and the next morning I felt extremely rough very very rough and phones um, no, I, I did the symptom checker with the NHS uh, app and, and it said, don't proceed, call 999 immediately. So what did I do? I called 111 instead. <laughs> and um, they, they also said, hang on a second, can I just talk to my supervisor? I'm going to send an ambulance to you right now. <laughs> uh, the paramedic was absolutely amazing. The ambulance people were just fantastic they took me to the hospital in Stevenage and um, I was admitted to the stroke ward practically straight away I didn't really have to wait much between uh, investigations but because it was such an odd bunch of symptoms um, they didn't really know until two days after when I got the uh, diagnosis that I have um, Wallenberg syndrome so I had an, a CT scan of my head, which didn't show anything. And then I, on the Thursday, I had an MRI and it showed a small occlusion um, in my medulla oblongata. And that's what it's called, lateral medulla syndrome and, um, or, or Wallenberg syndrome. So it, it all went, yeah, it all became clear. Uh, and until then, I, re I was really totally in denial that I'd had a stroke. No, not, not me. Not, no, we didn't have any classical symptoms. Um, so I was only in hospital for about a week, just, just a, sh a day short of a week. Um, my little boy, my partner were able to visit me, luckily. That would have been entirely different during this time. Um, but um, when I came home, I had amazing support from the early support discharge team, physio, OT, and speech and language therapy. And I had a psychological test as well. Um, and I went back to work after four weeks of uh, having my stroke. Um, I, I was working as a wheelchair therapist and um, that was only quite a short time into my work. I had only been there for three months. Before that, I'd always been a children's physiotherapist most of the time, or a respiratory physiotherapist. So that makes it even more kind of unacceptable that a health professional would have a stroke. 
and and be in denial about it. <laughs> um, so I had some difficult problems in um, in work uh, that the physical requirements were quite significant, and I started feeling very very fatigued physically. My uh, I started having pain on my left side of my body, which is now defined as uh, central post pain syndrome. And um, of course, I went to look up all sorts of things and I have access to the scientific articles and, uh, and statistics. And um, although I, I'm on pain medication, I still feel that pain quite significant and even more so when I'm fatigued. Um, my employer didn't make it entirely easy for me. Um, I got asked twice um, about uh, whether I was cognitively affected by my stroke and I was like hell no <laughs> I was definitely not and why would you ask that it would even be more offending to me if I if that was the case but it's entirely up to me to do that so the day after I had my awful meeting at work where they said, oh, we can't keep your post open for you like this because you don't meet the physical requirements anymore. Um, and I went to apply for another job, which, uh, which I was offered. And um, I'm starting that job on Monday, the 1st of June. But if it wasn't for COVID, I would have started that in April, more like. So yeah, I'm really excited to go back to my new to back to the NHS and going to my new job. Really, that would be really lovely. Yeah, um, that's so, a fantastic. Yeah, here we are. To what um, I know was a hard time for you. That's a really good ending to and something to look forward to as well. Yeah, yeah. It wouldn't be children's physio as I was used to, or the lots of uh, contact because I think there will be a lot of video assessments and. Mm. Uh, Def definitely with follow-up assessments, but maybe even the first assessments of children would also be, and their waiting list has been piling up due to the COVID. So there will be a lot of working down the list of, uh, of waiting people. Um, a lot of the team that I'm going to be working for have been redeployed into other positions. So I'll probably not meet my new team or many people of my new team until July, maybe August, uh, when they come back into their normal uh, post again. Yeah, that's it. I think things are going to be very, very different for the next couple of months with everything trying to get back to normal and what have mm -hmm. you. But um, at least you've, yeah. you've got light at the end of the tunnel now with a new job and, you know, that's fantastic. Yeah. And I believe you've got um, a three-year-old little boy. Yes, so he full of beans. Back, he can go <laughs> back to childcare when you go back to work then? Because I believe yeah, he's, he's um, Yeah, he's been as lucky as to spend 10 weeks away from childcare, five of which uh, with just his uh, dad. And um, the last five weeks worked with me as well when, when I was dismissed from work. Um, and I, yeah, I've really enjoyed the, the time, of course. It, it didn't feel like a holiday, but it did, in a way. <laughs> uh, it's, just, it's just really nice to spend time together as a family. Um, and I think it's going to be getting used to going back to the child mind uh, very much. So I think the first time we take him back, he's going to cry. <laughs> Oh, uh, the little ones adapt really quickly, don't they? And, oh yeah, yeah. And oh, and it's yeah. not like he's going to a new place. He's going to the same childminder where he yeah. was before, uh, and she just lives locally. So uh, I think yeah, we've stayed in touch with her as well, which is nice. That's good. Yeah. yeah oh, that's, that's good. really nice. It's nice if there's if there's positive things that have come out of this lockdown. It's yeah. great for yourself you've had that precious time that you wouldn't have had with your little one yeah and you know it'll it will remain with him i think because he's old enough to remember um you know and it's you've just got to be thankful for that i know there's a lot of other things going on just now but um you know that's definitely a positive 
Um, you... Also, in the last five weeks, I've been um, less, uh, I've been less tested physically as well. So, uh, I've had less worry about my fatigue going on, um, which has reduced the pain levels to some extent. Not, not everything got away, but I, I managed to at least do one walk with them. Uh, we went to the viaducts and I did about 50 meters or something, which is really quite nice before I had to rest. I used two walking sticks instead of one when, when we went for a walk. Um, because when I bear weight on my left leg, it sort of wrongly translates into pain. So if I can avoid that, I can bear it a little bit longer. Um, and he really enjoyed having me together there with the walk. And he constantly asks me if I can come and if I can come run after him. And I'm like, no, not really. <laughs> but hey, ho, yeah, Mama, can you jump? Yeah. Mm, no. <laughs> Oh, and, um, bless him. oh yes he's he, he kind of gets it he's kind of understanding that oh, oh yes because you were unwell isn't it um yes yes mommy was unwell <laughs> oh but they're good yeah. at dealing with with things these little ones i wish sometimes you know as adults yeah. we still had the the perspective of being young and just accepting things and getting yeah. on with he's them extremely resilient he's so resilient he just takes it all in his stride and uh yeah yeah fine and he does ask questions about it and then he just accepts the answer quite nicely but but why but why why <laughs> It's like a vinyl with a scratch on. <laughs> the wine it questions no vinyl, don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Even when they're vinyl. grown up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. have you have you got um friends and family that you, you have to keep in touch with over over lockdown by alternative yeah. methods? Yeah, so we've been um using FaceTime to uh call uh, my partner's parents. Um, they are on the south uh, coast in um, West Sussex, so we normally go and visit them at least once uh, once a month, and we stay down for the weekend normally. So they really really miss us. Um, they well, we of course we miss them as well. Um, but my partner's youngest brother, he's just moved to Japan just before the uh, lockdown. So we stay in touch with them uh, despite the time difference, which is about eight eight hours now. And uh, he works from home there, but in the UK time zone because he works for a UK company still. So we miss them. My parents live in Belgium, so we've been in touch with them via WhatsApp and video call. And then uh, when it was my son's birthday last week. Uh, we had to do a lot of video calling, of course, uh, say thank you for all the presents. And uh, yeah, and not getting together with family uh, has been harder, definitely. You know, during holiday time, we would normally really travel to Belgium. And um, our holiday in France was cancelled. We were going to go to Euro Disney. Um, but that's not happening now. Well, that didn't happen. Uh, hopefully we'll manage to do it later this year and um, fingers crossed we have a holiday booked for October yeah. so hopefully we'll be able to do that now we've been in Spain <laughs> so, oh, yeah. hopefully <laughs> yeah. if not we have a paid holiday for the next year or something oh yes that's it you'll yeah. you'll get there at some point I'm sure <laughs> Well, we've got to we've got to live in hope, haven't we? Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. So, would you say that what what's the hardest thing being in lockdown? I mean, have you managed to go out shopping, or have you you sent your partner out shopping, or how's how's that kind of been for you? Um, I think I have been shopping a couple of times. We managed to get a couple of um, uh, click and collect uh, orders. But I find it quite difficult to not be able to go into the shop and they substitute things that we don't want to do oh, yeah. and, um, uh, or some things that are just not available and then you still have to go into the store. Uh, but 
yeah, I think uh, we 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 tend to go out, or my partner goes out generally for shopping because it's mobility wise, it's not very great for me to have to queue up, and a lot of stores don't have uh, amendments for people with a disability, and for me to go around the shop is just not. I mean, then I'm out for the count for the rest of the day. Um, so my partner has had to go shopping most of the time. Hopefully the shops will compensate for, you know, people with disabilities as, as time goes on and, you know, we're, we're going to have to do this queuing and so many in as so many come out kind of thing for a while. They've, they've got to take yeah. everything into consideration. I think we were all... It's going to be the new normal for some time now, isn't it? Yes. No. You know, I think at the beginning we were all thrown into this so quickly. Um, you know, it was it's amazing what they did get organised, but there there are bits that they need to tidy up on. So, um, but yeah, I think it's going to be normal, and we'll we'll wait and see what the uh, <laughs> the close shop yeah. are like when they go back, and everybody's trying to get into the city. Yeah, definitely. Uh, <sighs> but yeah, we've been very lucky with the weather. Otherwise, during lockdown, there's been yeah. a lot of playing outside, and um, uh, but. My partner is very anxious about um, catching something and people in the shops have become a little bit complacent about keeping a distance and uh, but he's very firm in it and like no I need my two meters go back <laughs> um, <laughs> but that's I, I mean that's fair enough really because yes. if he catches it and he brings it home to me or, or to our boy then we we get more well more of a chance to have symptoms as well if i i'm not more uh how do you say i'm not more likely to catch it but i'm more likely to develop awful symptoms due to my breathing being affected uh, mm -hmm. as my stroke was in the brain stem so it's yeah it it's a bit worrying that i would catch anything um and both of us are very very careful with it not not at all complacent trying to wash our hands so much more we've had to find songs for jeffrey to uh <laughs> to motivate him to wash his hands more um so yeah it's we just needed to find a new normal it's and a new normal is going to be the only option there's not going to be back to normal what it was before no, I don't think so. And, and if it does, it'll be a long, long time before it happens, I think. And, you know, we've we've just got to get on with it. But, um, you know, I'm with you on the supermarket thing. There is a lot of complacency there. And it's not a difficult concept, two metres. And it's not a difficult concept to follow the arrows that the supermarkets have put in the aisles either. Yeah, <laughs> it, exactly. It, yeah. It's, it's the... Uh, I think that's the most stressful thing I've found in lockdown is getting annoyed with people in the shops, not doing the shopping, but getting annoyed with people in the shops myself because you think, you know, I'm doing what I'm supposed to. Why can't you kind of thing? If you have yeah. to, come out, we've all got to play, play the game, you know? Yeah. But, uh, but anyway, that's, that's life, isn't it? Yeah. Did you, have you attended a different stroke support group at all? Sorry, have I attended that? Attended a different stroke support group? Uh, yeah, I, um, I really like interacting with the other people in the, in the group. Um, and a lot of people, I, I really admire the courage of so many people because they don't let stroke define them. And yes, it is what binds us. It is what brings us together, but it's not, always the uh, the main subject of talking about and a lot of people talk about other other aspects of their life and I'm just amazed at how many people are able to pick up their life again and it really gives me a lot of strength and courage to keep going uh, to keep active and um, people share what they um, what they have achieved and how much they have Managed to do exercise and, and do new things again or, or pick up uh, pick up a new skill due to their stroke and I really I think it's very fascinating to see how other people cope with it um, it's very nice to be able to encourage each other as well 
So I find that very, very nice to be a part of that group. Really lovely. Oh, that's good to hear. There's, there's nothing quite like the peer to peer support and you can tell from our, our Facebook group as well, you know, that support yeah. is, you know, you, you can't put a price on the support. There's always somebody else if you if you post about a problem how do I get around such and such someone's always yeah. been there and is it able to offer support and what have you and yeah. and even if no one's experienced it you know just the the general support in there is fantastic so it's uh, mm. it's nice that you've got a group it's a shame we don't have have them everywhere around the country but um yeah. you know it's uh, we'll get there one day <laughs> yeah well I, I I think I, I've also, thanks to one of the members of Different Strokes, I managed to get in touch with other people with Wallenberg syndrome as well. Right. And um, the Different Strokes charity has the exercise videos, which I've been doing, and it's really quite useful. I should know, really, as a physio, what I can and can't do, and, and should really be pushing myself. But I'm, I'm, I am actually anxious about going too far and causing the fatigue symptoms so i'm a little bit worried about pacing out my energy throughout the day um so i i haven't really been pushing myself a lot really and not having access to gyms or swimming pools in the lately is not that easy for me either because i really love to be able to go swimming uh, so yeah, I have to do other kind of exercises, a bit of yoga with my little boy. There's a, there's a funny uh, YouTube channel that there's um, a narrative of some of the Disney stories like Moana and Frozen, and she does all the yoga uh, movements with it as well, which is very funny. And my son has been able to follow that too. And I tried and I was like, oh my God, that is hard. <laughs> I know some grown-ups that would like that too as well yeah. with the aspect. I know. Yeah, I'd like to be able to attend the yoga class again because I've done yoga for about 15 years and uh, it's really nice actually but at the moment I'm really struggling with my strength um, and overweight a little bit as well. But then yeah I'm, I'm not doing the exercise I should, I should be doing or I used to be doing so yeah so what are you looking forward to most when life goes back to some kind of normal and we can access most places again is there something in particular you're home to well uh, i think i think particularly swimming pools i'd be able to um, go go to the park i may need to use my wheelchair uh but um going back going to have a walk in the park would be nice um, having a bit more social interaction for my son which is nice I like pop up face to face we have a neighbor who they have a, a little boy who is only a couple of months younger than than my son so if, if only they could already play together that would be so nice yeah. Um, so yeah lots of things to go forward I, I wouldn't mind if a new normal takes the place of the old normal and we still have to be a little bit more wary of things but um yeah i'd mostly be looking forward to more social interaction with uh, with my neighbors and family that's it i think that's a you know getting to be the most important thing and you know i think people are getting used to the shops and and things yeah. how they are and what have you I, I quite like them quieter to be honest it's just <laughs> queuing to get in <laughs> that can be a bit of a pain but it seems to it seems to come and go there's not quiet times or busy times if you're if you're lucky there's no queue um, and yeah. if you're unlucky there's a big queue but um once you're in it's nice and quiet and I quite like that gives me time to uh, remember what I've forgotten if yeah, you know yeah. what I mean <laughs> mm yeah oh well i wish you all the best next Thank week you. when you start your new job Thank although you it's going to be a going to be a strange one i think as as uh, yeah. you know you you told me earlier and what have you but um you know you'll be making a difference to to some people and you know and your little one will get back to the childminder so 
Yeah, yeah it's yeah. it's going to be quite a, a different aspect of doing my my previous job. Having been a stroke survivor, I really hope that it gives me an extra edge to be able to help those children with a longer term disability, um, just to be able to have a different type of empathy really with them and they don't have to think that oh you don't know what i'm going through because i have this and i have that and that, actually i do have something as well that that makes it harder for me to do exercise or yeah and, and i really hope that gives me a little bit more uh touching points with uh with my new patients i'm sure it will you know you if they see that you've overcome you know your your problems and everything from the stroke and see that you're getting on with life even if you're you're in there and you're your sticks beside you you know you can sort of say i have to use this when i walk around but hey ho i can walk around you know i'm getting mm -hmm. there i had to work hard at it and you know yeah. every day is not a good day but you've just got to keep going and you know yeah. i'm sure that will spur them on so, yeah uh, well good luck and Thank you. let us all know on the Facebook group how it goes. And yeah. uh, we'll speak to you soon. Yeah. Thank you. It's been lovely speaking to you. Yeah, you too. Bye. Thank you. Bye.